Okay, we are ready. Hi everyone, it's Anna Gibbs and I am back with another installment of Surviving and Thriving. It's like my little talk show. I just kind of began. I love it. Have fun with it. I love uh, it. Yeah, so it's like episode five or six. I don't remember. I think six. And uh, I started this um, concept, Surviving and Thriving, the series, um, I don't know, back in April, I think, because we've been going through so many changes and there are just great stories of people and, and small business owners and agents who are just thriving and, and just moving right past surviving into thriving, regardless of what is going on or in, you know, in, in addition to what's going on around them. And uh, it's really, I've had some really interesting conversations. Um, so if you're joining us, um, my name is Anna Gibbs. I'm the general manager of three phenomenal Keller Williams Market Centers in the Hudson Valley area of New York. And I'm excited because today I'm joined by my friend, my mentor, my, my coach, uh, Terry Foster, Foster Nowland. And uh, Terry can tell you a little bit about herself. Um, she's a savvy businesswoman. She is an accomplished coach. And today I decided that we should really kind of backtrack almost and talk a little bit about the difference between surviving and thriving and what are the characteristics of survivors or the survivor mentality versus the thriving mindset. So I thought of no one better than Terry uh, to do this. So Terry, welcome and thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to do this with me. It's my pleasure and I'm honored. Yeah, oh, thank I you. So um, I have been asking this question a lot in the last several months and uh, you know, since COVID and it's really taken on a whole new meaning, honestly. And, and I'll just start right away with this question. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? How are you um, doing, my friend? How are you? You know, my, my automatic response, as you know, is usually great. I, you know, I, I think if I were to be honest, I'd say I'm good. I'm never anything less than good. Typically, um, great is the epitome. I think we're all in a space of just being aware mm -hmm. and maybe a little unsure, uncertain, and not in a bad way right? In an exploratory kind of way. Right. So I'm good. That's I'm really good. good. Yeah. So Terry, before we get into the um, topic, just tell everyone a little bit about your background and, you know, this way they know uh, without a doubt why you would be an expert to talk about this with me. Oh my gosh. Life has been so easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It has. That's what we all want to look like, right? Especially on Facebook. We all look great. Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then we break in and let people see who we really are. And, you know, right. I think what I'm learning, especially over the past few months, is something that Mo Anderson taught me years ago. Um, you know, be real, that your story is absolutely what will pull people to you and pull people into the direction that they need to go. Um, and, and so just a little bit about me, I'm not going to go into the story unless it goes there with our questions today is, you know, um, I live in Oklahoma and I've always lived in Oklahoma. I have been a coach for a little over 10 years, getting really close to 11 actually this next month. And prior to that, I've, I've been in the real estate industry since 1983 huh? and I grew up around it. And um, I grew up in the building industry and around real estate. I went into the management side, worked for one of the largest um, independently owned, female owned actually companies in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. And in 1996, I found Keller Williams. Thank you, Sherry Lewis and Mo Anderson, right? Always give credit to the people that dug the ditch before you. Yes. And, um, we opened market centers then. I was a team leader for 16 and a half years. I became a coach at Moe's Prompting, actually. And otherwise, I don't know that if I, I would have gone down that journey. So oh, I think the I lesson I knew is, that. Yeah, I know. When she said, huh, I'd be a MAPS coach. What do you say, right? I'm, hey, I'm, I'm Mo. I, yeah, Mo. Yes, Mo. And so I, I really, it took me a year to get through it. I was so focused on leadership. I was actually focusing on a market center that I just took over as an operating partner in another state. So I had a whole lot going on. I don't know if that has anything to do with surviving and thriving or not, 
Absolutely. Um, you know, since then, I have opened another market center with another business partner. I, I am an investor partner in three, full-time coach. And my one of my best friends in the world, Debbie Frapp, and I created a company called Matters of Influence. And since then, as you know, we have a podcast and we've got training. We've got a website. And we're just what started out as having a lot of fun at other people's prompting to just get around the table and talk has turned into about a year and a half of a, a, a really fun little side business for us where we're touching other business people outside of the real estate industry. Um, we get to work with our neuro linguistic programming training, our International Coaches Federation training, and of course, all of the great training that's been provided to both of us through Keller Williams and Bold and, and MAPS, Mega, Mega Achievement Productivity System. So, that's a little bit about my business background. Other than that, I am a grandma to Ford, also known as Gaga. Gaga. I'm Gigi. I have Gigi. one granddaughter. I'm yes, Gigi. you're Gaga. I'm Gaga. I let the first one name me and that stuck. Sometimes it morphs into Gawa. <laughs> uh, and they go from four down to 11 months. And I'm staring at all the things they make me on my board. I see that. So fun. So fun. So fun. Anyway, uh, so. And you know, for another episode, I'm going to, it's interesting when I listen to you, I've had the honor of coaching with you for I mean, a, a little on and off, but really for many years. Yeah. And um, it's interesting how I'm on that path. I'm following like along a lot of the things that you've done. It's really cool, actually. Yeah. After it. I mean, I, I, there's some things I can warn you about. So just yeah. <laughs> so let's just jump. Let's just let's jump right it. into um, this topic of surviving versus thriving. So, uh, Terry, what do you think is really the difference between surviving and thriving? Because I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people without knowing the difference will be very proud of saying I'm a survivor, yet there's another level to get to beyond surviving and that is thriving. So how do you define the difference? That is such a great, great point. People do use that a lot, right? There's a song about that. I'm a survivor. Right. Um, and, and survival mode is that white knuckling mode, right? Where you're just hanging on <clears throat> many times. And some people don't even know when they've passed through surviving into thriving. And the interesting thing, uh, Debbie Frapp and I were just talking about this on a podcast, I think two or three podcasts ago, surviving and thriving are both mindset. Mm. So they're both mental and physical. And sometimes when you're paying so much attention to where you are physically, you don't know when you've mentally gone into that thriving mode or vice versa, right? You might be thriving and feel like you're just surviving, right? So the difference is you move from this white knuckling, I'm just barely hanging on, I'm surviving to I'm thriving. The, the barriers have been let down the term, I've got a weight off my shoulders. Mm. That even might feel like you've moved into thriving mode. And I think um, one of, there is a book that, I, that I'm just downloaded that was suggested to me to read, talks about this idea of being frantic all the time. Huh. It's frantic energy. And surviving and thriving are both energies. And there are times when some of us love to be in frantic energy because we really feel like we're getting things done when in fact we may not be. So there is a place where it, all of us individually have to know what is that? Where do we cross over? Right. We cross over. Yeah. And I think too that there, so of course there's a lot happening in our world right now. There's been a lot of challenge and adversity. Yeah. Um, and so 2020 is the year no one could have predicted. Yeah. Yet, who are we to say life is without challenge too, right? Yeah. So um, yet, Aside from that, I think that we can look around our offices, our teams, or even our family members, and we can recognize that people are passing through life uh, with a survival mentality or a, th or a thriving outlook. And, and what, what are we looking for you know, when, when we think about survivors versus thrivers? How do they think differently? Thrivers know how to get out of survival mode. Mm. So thrivers can recognize that moment when they cross over or when they're getting close to crossing over. It's, it's like the ability to be able to see a goal and along the way you're looking at a scoreboard 
and you can see light on the other side. And thrivers know that feeling. Survivors tend to be in an autonomy of survival all the time. And, and honestly, they like it. Mm. It, it feels kind of good. Your programming. Exactly. It's your programming. And sometimes you're thinking, because I'm surviving, I'm just barely getting, man, I'm, I'm working until nine o'clock at night. And it's, well, it's, it's just that frantic energy. You feel like you're accomplished because you're feeling that survival mode all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you say survivors are, are they victims? Sometimes. Yeah. Let's, let's look at this though. Um, surviving a physical illness. Mm -hmm, for sure. Many people that we know, and I can, I can share a personal experience with you in my life from my first husband, um, surviving cancer and uh, the fight through it, they have the mental capacity of thrive. Yeah. Physically, what we see on the outside though, barely getting up, barely being able to get out of bed, physical illness, they're surviving just to keep their eyes open sometimes during chemotherapy, right? Mm -hmm. So I look at that in their head, they're on the other side, they're going to the other side. Physically, they're not feeling it. Are they victims? I don't think so because right. their mindset says I'm going there. Remember the victim versus accountability graph where it says what victims are and, and what accountability people that are accountable are accountability or thrivers. So I'm glad you said that. And survivors tend to be in the victim side where it's blaming someone else. There must be a reason for this. It's not my fault. Um, I just can't do anymore. Thrivers are always like, there's something bigger and better for me. I made a mistake. I'll get up and do it again. And like, you know, John Maxwell says people that the people that fail are that fail forward are the people that fall down and know to get back up. Yeah. That's thriving. Yeah, I think thrivers are less uh, likely to accept the status quo, they'll, they'll, right? They, they know and pay attention to what's happening around them. And then they're, they're quickly, and, not, and it's not to say that someone who is programmed to thrive doesn't have that moment of uh -huh. self-doubt or, or challenge or being overwhelmed, but they quickly get into, okay, how do I get past this, move forward and grow from here? Would you say that's true? Absolutely, absolutely. We all go through, um, maybe daily, we all go through that moment of, I just don't know if I can do this anymore, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm not gonna call that victim. I'm not even gonna call that status quo. I think the challenge, that I think the opportunity we have is know that when we say things like that or think things like that, we catch it. And that is new programming. Since you're using that word, I'm gonna use that again. That is new programming. We all have the ability to reprogram once we become aware of the challenge that we see about ourselves. And you know, our brain is built for fight or flight. Right. Right, you know that. And there are, it was brain, to, it was built to protect us. It was created to protect us, whether we flee from something or whether we fight for it. There are times we probably fight for things where we should step back and take a look at it. Mm -hmm. It what that what the brain does is begin to signal you that there's a decision a decision that has to be made. Right. And in scary moments, your brain is going to take you away from things that are going to hurt you. And sometimes you even resist that. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so how how can someone move? So let's say we have someone who's aware that they're in just really survival mode and they, they want to, to move past that into really thriving and growing past that. What are some ways that a person can move from survival to thriving? You know, I have these, these bullet points written down. <clears throat> Number one is stay purpose-driven. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what purpose-driven means, that means you have a purpose. Go back to what your purpose is and stay on point about that purpose. So stay purpose-driven. I think the best thing any of us can do, and, and this comes from practice, it's being constantly aware of what that looks like. When do I slip into that, man, I can't do this anymore mode, or I'm just not good enough. Um, and- A high level of awareness, really. Yeah, 
you yeah. can't go a little sleep at the wheel and not realize your own behavior. And that and that can be challenging for some people. It That's why we pay higher coaches like us it, to help them, you know. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes it's even when your coach just says to you, well, well, what are you feeling about that? Where else is that showing up in your life? Is that really how you feel? And sometimes just ha having people ask you those triggering questions is going to create that heightened awareness. And then over time, you're not going to be able to not recognize it. Yeah. Right? Because it's like a habit. It's been yeah. formed and you understand it. So being purpose driven, driven may mean you need to create that accountability or that trigger that's going to help you understand when it shows up. Right. And like I said, everybody, we're going to fall into it over and over again. Um, another thing that you can do is consistently surround yourself with people that win. Yes. And the definition of win is different for all of us. Right. So whatever your definition of winning is, surround yourself with those people, those positive people that are going to help you also win. That's also going to help you with that purpose driven piece especially if they get to know you and know more about you and what you want your outcomes to be. When you start hanging around with people that think bigger than you or make more money than you do or have the life that you want, then you're going to automatically going to want to start changing all those things. Right? It expands your vision. And Absolutely. sometimes you really just need to see it bigger than, than what you can imagine. I love that. What else? That's right. Uh, constantly build yourself up. Yeah. How many of us look in the mirror every morning and go, man, I love your hair. Man, you're the best. You know, that takes me back. This will age me big time, other than the dates that I threw out there earlier. <laughs> there used to be on, I think it was Saturday Night Live, there was a live, there was a comedian that used to look in the mirror and, and basically do affirmations. And we used to laugh at that. You're good enough. You're smart enough, right? I, you probably are too young to remember that. And we used to sit around and laugh at that. And now it's the thing, right? Sure. So constantly build yourself up. And what I mean by that is constantly recognize what you did well. So mm -hmm. at the end of every day, and this came from Diana Kikoska, at the end of every day, write down at the I'm sorry, at the beginning of every day, write down five things you intend to happen that if they did, you would consider to have had a good day. Yeah, I love And it. at the end of the day, if you did three of them, you probably had a great day. And what that does is bring you into self-acknowledgement that you're constantly building yourself up that you did something well. How well, often do we do that? Right, and, and talk about being in thriving mode because now you're really, you're predicting outcomes and you're designing your, your day and you're in control of it, where right. I don't think surviving is, is that, is you're not in control. So I love right. that. There, and then there's, there's, there's something else too. You need to start unbelieving. And right. what I mean more about that. Uh-huh, isn't that great? I knew yeah. that would get your attention. I'm you actually writing it down say this we all need to start unbelieving things there's some things we need to start unbelieving and in the company that you and I work for we call that myths mm -hmm. or myth understandings right yeah there are some things that we believe that are nothing more than a story we've created in our head and it's created from past experience yeah. something happens we form an opinion it becomes true and then we have to go through the cycle of changing it so I think everybody should be aware of there are some things that we really need to unbelieve. And in coaching, we call that the, uh, the, the actual true model is what it's called. You can ask yourself, okay, is that really true? Right. You know, I'm going to be very transparent with some of the things that we're going in through right now with social injustice. You know, I'm asking myself very clearly, you know, I believe I love everyone. I truly believe I'm called to love everyone. And at the end of the day, where is my gap mm -hmm. um, as a person? And what are some things I need to unbelieve mm -hmm. about what I think I believe? Now that gets really confusing and deep. However, I'm using that freshly right now to go, what is it that I need to unbelieve that might be true outside of what I think, right? So that's what unbelieve means. And then when you start to unbelieve some things, the next process is to let them acknowledge them and let them go. Mm. So identify what you need to unbelieve and look for a different truth. 
and then learn to let go of those stories you've made up in your head after you've said, okay, that's what I believe, but is that really true? Yeah. And this is all self-talk, right? Oh yeah. And you know, it's funny, I'm listening to you and I'm saying to myself, um, for the work that we do and the education that we have and the, the, the good fortune of you know, being in the company that we're in at Keller Williams, a lot of this, we talk about this all the time, right? Yet I know that there's someone listening to this who's like, wow, this is, this is so interesting. It's like a foreign language to me. And so why, why is it that, so for those, for those people who really are, are just doing the work now, um, I want to give them encouragement that they can get out of survival mode into thriving, but I also want to give them some basic understanding because we can easily be too hard on ourselves. Why, why do you think it is so hard for people to get out of that survival? Is it almost a default way of thinking for some people? I think it's default for all of us. I oh. think we're built in with a default. You know, as children, we don't know any difference. So we, we just, we learn by falling down, right? We learn by falling off our bike. We learn by getting up. And there's this default after a while that all of the, this path that we've been down, that's just how it's going to be. A little bit of that. And then we, we never think about internally, what is it that I need to change my thinking around? Or we never look at the other person who we totally disagree with and understand they could be right. It's just, it goes back to that self-awareness thing. Um, so I think what we can do first is maybe even read or understand um, a little bit more about the topic of victim versus accountability or what does thriving mean? And for, for people that don't know who John Maxwell is because they may be on a journey of not really getting into leadership or getting into self-awareness or understanding, like you know, Anna, he just did a whole series yeah. on surviving and thriving. Yeah. And you've probably posted some of that right here on this Facebook page. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure I have. Now that I think about it, um, I feel inundated by it all the time by looking yeah. and reading it. So those might be some pieces you could help people with by sending some of that information their way and understanding what that means. Um, so how do you move? Recognize it understand what survival means. When do I feel like I just can't do anymore? For some of us, it's when we're ready to fall apart. <laughs> some of us, it's we don't have to get that far. Yeah. It's different for all of us. And I think peer partnering with someone that understands that, getting yourself into um, training and classes, reading blogs and articles around it, listening to podcasts. You can now search podcasts for those topics. Just go, just go make yourself aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then start, you have to be willing, right? The oh, first yeah. Step, you I have to be willing. You, you know, because you can overload on all this information. You can listen to yeah. podcasts, these videos, read books. Until you're really, really ready to make a change, um, you know, we talk about pleasure versus pain, right? Until the pain of where you are just becomes so great that you need to create change in your life that you won't be motivated to do it. So I think that is key. And, and yet we all have the ability to do it. Right. Right. You know, it you starts with your life in a moment. If you, it, it starts with how you think. That's right. It starts with how you think. And I think that if you, um, even today, you just bring this topic to everyone's awareness and people hearing it, your brain, their brains have accepted it. So everyone listening, whether you realize it or not, your brains, if, even if you're, you have your computer turned on or your phone turned on and you're doing something else, your brain's hearing this and it is going to start triggering you about things. This may show up three months from now, right? Where you start thinking about this and it all started with a conversation. So where does it actually start? Where does change begin in the way we think? And we have to be willing to think that we can think differently. And then the behavior changes, then the behavior changes. So if you unbelieve and then you let go and then you face your fear about letting go of something that you're thinking that you thought was true and maybe isn't. You know, and I know we're running out of time. The belief is huge too, because uh, you know, we know that our, our beliefs are really like the rules we live by. Yeah. And that's what's shaping our thinking and our thinking is, is, you know, how we speak and that's shaping what we do and that's how we get results and that's all programming 
around and around, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. so I think a lot of people uh, will instinctively want to change the actions that they're, they're engaged in to get different results. But if you don't examine your beliefs around it, it's not a sustainable, those actions are not going to last and you're not going to see the results you really want. So this whole conversation, it's really about examining what you believe about surviving and thriving and how you identify with it so you can change your thoughts, right? And change your, your actions. That's right. That's right. And you can probably look around. I mean, a great activity for everyone to, to do would be to write survivor and thriver at the top of your paper and, you know, like split the page down the half and down the middle and just start saying, who in my world do I see as a survivor? Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, do then, I think they're, they're a survivor or a thriver, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then who do I visualize as a thriver? And just kind of meditate on that. Like, who are the physical examples that I see of that? And then there are going to be a lot of tie-ins that you can do with that. What do they have in common? What is to, what are how are they polar opposites? Right. Um, and that, that's a great exercise just for people to start. Yeah, that's great. I love that. So while we have another minute, uh, Terry, what are you reading right now? Oh my gosh, I um, I just went blank. I just downloaded the book. Now I'm going to pull it up because um, I'm so excited, I have to tell you, I'm one of those people that starts reading like three or four books at a time. Oh, we all, I, I, I've heard that some, Rosemary and I both say that all the time. We do the same thing. I hate it. And um, <laughs> I hate that I did that. And in fact, I'm sitting here going, can I even look this book up? Um, I just downloaded it. I have to thank Dana Gentry for this one because she called me, she's a, as a client, as you know, she called this past week and said, I just want to read something to you. Um, and I want you to hear what I'm thinking. And it's about this frantic energy. Oh. And it is about, um, oh, I can't find it. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Online. No, I should know this. I'm just literally blank. Um, it's in my Audible. I don't know why it's not there. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm rereading You Are a Badass. Yes. Oh, I love that book. That. I, I am rereading it because I enjoy her so much. So that's one of the things that I'm reading. Um, um, it'll hit me in a minute. I may have to like go back and post it to your Facebook page. Okay, do that. It. I'm sure we'll love to hear. Uh, the author's name is Gabrielle. I can tell Gabrielle you. Gabrielle Bernstein? Yes. Oh, super attractor? Yes. I'm a big Gabrielle Bernstein fan. If Gabrielle is listening, I'd love to talk to you too. And I don't think she lives too far from me. That's but that's for another show. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I love I'm, her. Um, I'm, Super I'm, Tractor is great. And you know, yeah. the, the first book I read by Gabrielle was "The Universe Has Your Back." Yes, and that's also very good. Yes, that one I've read a long time ago. Actually, I think when it first came out. Yeah, probably good five uh, or six years. Probably need to reread it. Uh, and now I'm. I had. I don't know how I missed Super Tractor. And yeah, it just said, came out before the COVID pandemic. Oh, did it? Yeah, okay. maybe January. Okay. Then I don't feel behind. So that's one of the ones I'm reading. About. I'm always reading something John Maxwell. Right? Yeah, in the morning I tend to always read that, um, and I and I do. I, I'm sitting here looking at books like I've got stacked up that I read. I'm sure it's a folder. Plus yeah, that's Audible too. Yeah. So anyway, I'm an Audible listener for you sure. Too. It's great when you're in the car and and even now from home. I just re-listened to Never Split the Difference. Oh, yeah, I never read that. Yep, uh, it's about negotiation skills yep. um, and um, a little bit of emotional intelligence, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love to talk about. So those are some of them right now. Cool. All right, last question. I'm going to let you go because I know how busy you are. What, and hopefully this is not uh, a long, complicated answer, but uh, what, has this, what has this, uh, these last three months really taught you about yourself? Oh my gosh, uh, that I do or too much. That you do too much? But there are a lot of things that I was doing that really weren't necessary. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with going, uh, like going, whether it was going to the store, going, I'm a you know, goer. I've uh, learned to traveling. slow down. It's all the things I can live without. Yeah, that's a gift in itself, right? Yeah, and then, and then it did teach me that I'm not going anywhere, so I better figure out how I do learn how to meditate more, read more, listen more be studious, actually be in the quiet more. Love that. It's a good place to end. Thank yeah. you, Carrie. This was a great conversation, and I trust that someone uh, got exactly what they needed. 
by listening to, to this now or whenever they hear it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Have a yeah. wonderful weekend. You too. I love you. I love you too. All right. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye-bye.